getting started with Cloud CI high availability on traditional platforms. Here's today's starting point. I have a Cloud BCI Client Controller version 2.414.2.2. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video titled Getting Started with Cloud BCI High Availability, the link to that video is down in the description. In that video, I talk about using Cloud BCI High Availability on modern cloud platforms. For this video, we're going to be talking about high availability for traditional platforms. Now, before we get into the example, I want to take you through the documentation in case you haven't looked at it yet. The link to this documentation is also down in the description. Now, before we get started, take a look at this warning. High availability active active on Windows controllers is not supported. What that means is for traditional platforms, the only way that you can run high availability is on Linux based controllers. Now think about what we expect for high availability. We expect to have a load balancer, at least two instances of our controller, and then a shared file system. And since we're going to be using Linux-based controllers, we're going to be using NFS as our shared file system. So again, load balancer, a couple of instances for our controller replicas, and then finally, our shared file system, which is going to be NFS. So let's go back over to the documentation. So we have our load balancer. Well, what does our load balancer need? First off, the load balancer must be configured with sticky sessions. If you've used the high availability active passive version from the past with traditional platforms, this is something that is very different. In that case, you did not want to use sticky sessions. But in the case for high availability active active, you do want to use sticky sessions. Secondly, you also must set up a health check endpoint. Be sure to review the documentation when you're setting this up to get the proper endpoint that you need to be checking against. Next up, let's take a look at our storage. All replicas must point to the same Jenkins home location. Also, for Cloud BCI on traditional platforms, you must be using NFS compatible shared file system. And if you need to set up your NFS client on your controller instances, you can follow the instructions from the NFS guide knowledge base article. Now, before we go ahead and move on to the next section, let's take a look at our current controller. If we take a look at Manage Jenkins and then go down to System Information, we'll take a look at Environment Variables. And for our Jenkins Home Environment Variable, what we have right now is slash MNT slash NFS underscore CC underscore home. So at this point, I have my load balancer already set up with sticky sessions. I have a health check endpoint going against this one instance. Then within my controller, I've already gone ahead and instead of using local storage for my Jenkins Home Directory, I've already set up NFS and this controller instance is already connected to NFS. So basically, if you think about it, I have my load balancer, I have my controller, and I have NFS. So at this point, I'm pretty much already set up to go ahead and add in that second controller instance. Before we do that, let's go back and take a look at the documentation one more time. So now let's take a look at our controller service configurations. You've got to make changes to the service configurations in order for the high availability subsystem to be activated. Typically, when you're installing on Linux, you're going to be installing via a package manager, whether that's DNF, YUM, APT, or Zipper. Now, if you've done an RPM install, that file location is Etsy Sysconfig Cloudbees Core CM. If you did an install via APT, that file that you're going to be updating is Etsy Default Cloudbees Core CM. Now, let's take a look at the three specific values that you need to update. The first one that you're going to be updating, whether it was an RPM or a Debian-based install, is Jenkins Home. And you're going to change the default value, which is varlib cloudbees core cm, to whatever the mount is that you've mounted on your controller instance. So in my case, my mount was named slash mnt slash nfs cc underscore home. So I just changed the value of Jenkins Home from the default value to where my mount is defined on the controller instance. That's Jenkins Home, that's number one. Number two is Jenkins Arcs. There's one mandatory value that you need to set, and there's an optional value that you need to set. First off, we need to add an argument for plugin root. Now, if you take a look at the definition of how the process starts up, you'll see a dash dash web root. What that means is, is when the process starts up, it takes the WAR file and explodes it into that directory. That directory is always local to the instance. It is not on the shared file system. What plugin root does is it takes the HPI file, that's the plugin file, and explodes it much like how the WAR file is exploded. We also want the plugin root to be local to the instance, not on the shared file system. If you don't specify a plugin root, 
then when the plugin file is exploded, it's going to be exploded into the Jenkins home directory under the plugins directory. We don't want that. The only thing that we want to see inside of Jenkins home plugins are just the HPI files. That's it. Nothing exploded, no subdirectories, no nothing else. Just the HPI files. So when those plugin files explode, we want those to be local to the controller instance as well. So in the case where we did an RPM install, we should set the value to var cache cloudbees core cm slash plugins. Now var cache is already created for us during the RPM installation. We're just specifying a new directory to be under that base directory of var cache cloudbees core cm. If you did a deb install, it's a little bit different. If you take a look at the Etsy default cloudbees core cm file, you're going to see var cache dollar sign name plugins because name is defined earlier within that file. The optional argument to set is prefix. Now this is going to be up to your specific location. If you take a look at how I have mine set up, I have cb.code101 slash cc1. So in my case, what I want to see here is I want to have a base domain where all of my Cloud BCI instances live. So if I had an operation center, which in this case I actually don't, I would say cb.codes101.com slash OC. For this case, I've got CC1 set up for the controller that I'm going to be creating. If instead you're wanting to set up separate subdomains, so instead of saying .com slash OC or .com slash CC1, you instead wanted to say cc1.example.com for your controller and oc.example.com for your operation center, then you would not need to add in this prefix, but you would have to configure your load balancer to route the traffic to each of those instances. I personally like having a single domain and then I set up the prefix for each of the instances that I wanna to go to, whether it's the operation center or my controllers. So we'll go back over to the documentation. In my case, I've set up the prefix of CC1. Again, taking a look at the documentation, if we take a look at this complete example for Jenkins args, by default with Jenkins args, you're gonna see a web root defined, you're going to see an HTTP port defined. And then in our case, we're adding in two extra arguments, one for plugin root and one for prefix. So far, we've taken a look at Jenkins home and Jenkins args. Now we need to take a look at our Java args. And this is the most important part of this documentation. With our Java options, number one, Java 11 is required in order to run Cloud BCI for traditional platforms version 2.414.2.2 or higher. This version is where high availability was first made available. Now also, the Java options and system properties we're talking about in this video are specific only for high availability. There are other options that you should be setting as well. Be sure to review Prepare Jenkins for support for all of the other options and properties you should be setting in your startup files, in your sysconfig, in your default file. Now if we take a look at all of the options and properties that are listed here, we have add exports, we have add modules, and then we have a number of system properties to set. Now I'm not gonna go through each one of these. I'll let you go through that when you're doing your setup. But if you did an RPM install, the key that you're gonna be setting in your Etsy sysconfig is Jenkins Java options. And the way that you'll set it up is you would say Jenkins Java options plus equals, and then whatever the value is. All of the ones listed right here are the ones listed from right here. So RPM install, you can just do a plus equals and it will continue to append to our Jenkins Java options. If you did an apt-based install, you're gonna be updating the Java args value. Now, instead of doing the plus equals like we did in the RPM install, you're going to be changing Java args, which will have a headless true value, and you're gonna change it to include everything within that argument. So two different setups here and also two different keys to go after. With an RPM install, you're gonna be updating Jenkins Java options. With a Debian-based install, you're gonna be updating Java args. Now note the two last values in both of these examples. We have an example for Jenkins plugins git abstract git SEM source cache root dir, and also the one for GitHub branch source cache root dir. Notice these are pointing at var cache, dollar sign name, caches, and then two different directories. The one for Git is just Git. The one for GitHub branch source is GitHub branch source. The base directory for both of these is var cache cloudbees core CM caches, or also the, what we can see here for the Debian, var cache dollar sign name caches. Those are the two examples. This should also be a disk local to the replica or the instance. 
and not on a shared disk, just like what we talked about with plugin root. Now, this base directory will need to be created by you, and you'll also have to set up the correct permissions. There's an example right here. We'll make the directory under varcache cloud beast core cm caches. We'll change the permissions on it, and then we change the ownership. Once you have that base directory in place, then those subdirectories, the git subdirectory and the GitHub branch source subdirectory will be created automatically. You just have to create that base directory manually. Now, the way that high availability is working is using Hazelcast. Replicas must be able to contact one another on whichever port is chosen at random for Hazelcast. Discovery is automatically based on the common Jenkins home volume. That's the reason why you have all of the replicas or instances pointing at the same Jenkins home. The configuration to know where to talk to each other is maintained down in that directory. Now, if you were to set up an explicit hazelcast.config system property, it would use that instead of using what is inside of Jenkins home. Now, in order for this to even work, you have to install a plugin. So at this point, I have my load balancer, I have a single replica, and I have NFS. And that's the only reason why this is running. We can't do anything until we at least have that straight line in place. Now, when I did the installation, I did not install the plugin necessary for high availability active active. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing that and going through that configuration in just a moment. The plugin that we're gonna be installing is CloudBees-Replication. However, if you're installing on a version that's older than 2.414.2.2, there's a good chance that the previous active passive based high availability plugin is still installed. And that plugin needs to be uninstalled. So if you're not running high availability on your controller, all you're gonna to need to do is go in and uninstall that plugin. That plugin is clobbies-ha. If you are running active passive already on your controller, you're first going to need to go ahead and get it stripped all the way down to where you're running basically like how I am. Load balancer, a single instance, and NFS. And at that point, you'll be able to uninstall Cobby's HA, and then go through and set up Cobby's replication once you get to 2.414.2.2. That's the number one thing is you have to get to that version first, and then you're going to be installing Cobby's replication. And also one big note here, if you're going to be restarting controllers, let's say you installed a new plugin, every one of those controllers are going to need to be restarted. So enough talking, let's start doing. Let's go back over into our controller. You'll notice here that I have one job set up. It's a make job. What is it? Right now I'm connected to a single agent. It's a static agent. And we can see here I'm running make version. I'm sleeping for 30 seconds and then I'm running GCC version. So our example here is going to be, we're going to start the job. We're going to stop the instance where the job is running. And then the other job should pick up and continue running the rest of the job. So we'll run it, we'll get into make, we will stop the instance while it's sleeping. And then once it wakes back up, the GCC version should just continue running as if nothing happened. Let's also take a look at our static agent real quick. We have one static agent here and it's connected via SSH. Let's go ahead and go down into Manage Jenkins, Plugins. We're gonna to go to Available Plugins and we're gonna search for CloudBees Replication. We're gonna pick the one that was version 868 at the time of recording. I'm going to say install after restart. I wanna make sure everything comes in fine. We go from pending, now into downloaded successfully. Let's go ahead and restart our controller. Now that our controller's back up, let's go ahead and log back in. Let's take a look at installed plugins. Let's search for CloudBees replication. We can see that it's installed, it's enabled. Let's go ahead and double check for CloudBees HA, make sure it's not installed. It's not. So we're good to go with this. Let's go ahead and go over back into Manage Jenkins. And because we've installed the Cloudbees replication plugin, we now have a new panel that we can take a look at here. We can take a look at Cloudbees CI high availability. What we can see here is that we have a single instance right now. It's CC11. It's current. So that means that's the one I'm currently on. We can reset sticky sessions if we want to, but there's also this enable developer mode. Let's go ahead and enable this mode, click on save. Let's go ahead and scroll down. You'll notice here at the very bottom, we have replica running on CC11 at 4247 and an IP address. So by enabling developer mode, it will tell us in the footer which controller instance we're actually connected to. So in this case, since there's only one, I'm only seeing CC11. Let's go ahead and go back up to that panel and let's disable developer mode. Now that we've disabled it, it's gone from the footer. Now, I don't know if you caught it at the very top or not, but there's a new warning here. To work in high availability mode, outbound static agents must be configured with a specific retention strategy giving replicas exclusive agent to the agent. Think about it for just a second. If I've got multiple replicas all pointing at the same agent, only one can be 
able to connect to that agent at one time. So how do we do that? Fortunately, it just tells us, we found some nodes on the system which are not properly configured for this usage. Please click on apply migration to update their configuration. Well, what is the configuration? We'll come back to the apply configuration in just a minute. If we take a look at agent one, and take a look at the configuration, what we're looking at is now under availability, there is a new option available here that's called CloudBees High Availability. The default for this, at least the way it was set up, was keep this agent online as much as possible. Let's go back over to Manage Jenkins. Let's click on Apply Migration. That warning goes away. Let's go back into our agent, take a look at our configuration. And what we'll see here is now the Availability is CloudBees High Availability. By taking a look at the help, it'll tell us gives the controller replica exclusive access to an outbound static agent. So that is the only change that is applied to this static agent. It's changing the availability from whatever it was to CloudBees High Availability. Let's go over and take a look at my Etsy sysconfig. Now I'm saying Etsy sysconfig because right now I'm running on a Fedora-based operating system. So if we were to take a look at sudo vi etsy sysconfig cloudbees core cm. And if I go down, we see our Jenkins home, and then we see the definition for our Jenkins Java options. And then we see all of the ones that were specified in the documentation. So when I set up this controller, I went ahead and set up the options and the system properties that I needed for high availability, even though I hadn't installed the plugin yet. So all of that is set up. And in fact, if we go down to the bottom, we can see that Jenkins args also has my plugin root and my prefix. Now, I've also taken this exact same sysconfig and I've copied it over to the second instance or the replica. So that way, when that second instance comes up, it has the exact same configuration as the first instance. So let's go ahead and start up the instance or the replica on this second instance. So I'll say sudo systemctl restart cloudbees core cm. I'm going to go ahead and tail the log so I can see once it is completely up. We can see here from the log that our Cloudy CI controller is fully up and running. So let's go ahead and go back over into our dashboard, Manage Jenkins. Let's go down to the panel, Cloudy CI High Availability. Now we see that we have two replicas running. We have a replica running on CC11, and we have a replica running on CC12. This is the one that we just started. The one that's marked current and in bold is the one that I'm currently viewing right now. So I'm coming through the load balancer and I'm being routed to CC11. Let's go ahead and go back over to our job. We'll click on make and click on build now. We take a look at the output of build run three. We can see here on the second line, this one is being managed by CC11. So that means this job is currently being run on CC11. Remember we made a change to our static agent configuration. It actually was taken offline because it doesn't need to be online until a job is actually being run on that agent. So we're just waiting for the agent to come online. Now that the job is online, we run our make version, we see the version, and now we're in our sleep. Since we know that we're running on CC11, I want to stop the process on that instance. Let's go over to CC11. I'm gonna say sudo systemctl stop cloudbees core CM. Once the process has stopped, let's go back and check out what's happening within the logs. We can see that we're going to be resuming the build after a Jenkins restart, but the next line is critical here. We are resuming our build on CC12. We're waiting for the reconnection of agent one before proceeding with the build. So what's happening right now, CC11 went away, CC12 took over this job, and is now making the connection up to our agent one to continue on with the rest of the job. We can see here now that we are ready to run. It runs the GCC version. We see the output of that, and then the job completed successfully. So again, taking a look at this, we started out with the job running on CC11. We waited for the agent to come online because now that our static agents need to be in a new state called CloudBees High Availability, it takes a, a moment for the agent to make the connection. We ran our step, we slept, then we went ahead and stopped the process on CC11. At that point, CC12 took over, we reconnected, it started up and then ran GCC version. If we were to take a look now at our panel that is in Manage Jenkins, and we take a look at Cloudy CI High Availability, we're gonna now see that the only replica available to us is CC12. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, 
give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to Cloud Bees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on Cloud Bees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.